Two years ago, I purchased a Nintendo Switch. This was only a few years after I had got my first Wii, got it with the intentions of modding it, and prior to that had actually never owned a Nintendo home console. And I bought this Wii used on eBay for $190. This was in like the fall of 2019, back when you could actually buy one used for that price. And in retrospect, I got a very good deal. But I bought this particular used model because it was a version one switch, a switch with a serial number that indicated that it would be modded. Now, oftentimes if you just go on eBay and you search for moddable Nintendo Switch, you'll find that they are oftentimes more expensive than just buying a brand new Nintendo Switch at the store, on a store shelf, because those switches cannot be modded. So if you want to get a system that is moddable, it needs to be one of the earlier consoles that were released, like sometime in 2017 to early 2018. It would have had to have been on store shelves. And you can look at the model number on the bottom ledge of the console that actually goes into the dock. On that bottom ledge of the tablet part of the console, you can see the model number, and that will indicate to you if it's a moddable system. Based on what that model number is, I'll have a link in the description that will help you, you know, kind of figure out if your Switch is moddable already. Because if you don't currently own a moddable Switch, it's very difficult to get your hands on one, considering how many more Switches have been manufactured and put out into the wild since then. It has thus made it be that much more difficult to get a moddable Nintendo Switch at a fair price, buying it from somebody that doesn't realize that it's worth a little bit more money, even if it's not actually modded already, but just the fact that it can be. So oftentimes it seems like in the comments I've seen on my channel and the previous videos I've done on this, people find it easier just to shell out like five or 600 bucks and buy a pre-modded Nintendo Switch. They don't have to worry about the process of actually getting it all set up because it is a more complicated process than say modding a PS3 or even like an original Xbox. So if you're wondering how to actually get the system modded, I'll have a video down in the description that will show you how to do that because it is a longer and more complicated process. What I'm actually gonna talk about here is what I've thought of owning one and kind of what I've been doing with it and if I've seen benefit from actually having a modded system. Now, of course, the biggest reason why people want a modded Nintendo Switch is still to play Nintendo Switch games and oftentimes that's what I still do on mine. But the fact that you can take a game cartridge that you bought, you can copy it to your SD card, have it back up on there so you can play the game without actually having the game cartridge in the system is a fantastic feature that obviously would have been great to have on the system out of the gate. I understand that the legality of it makes it be impossible, but it's very nice for a system that in my opinion is probably the last one that will have true value to owning the physical media attached to these games. That cartridge that you buy at the store oftentimes is playable without the day one patch. The day one patch probably improves the game. The day you know, two, three, the patches that come after add content to the game, fix some bugs, but the fact of the matter is you can play the game without the day one patch because the Nintendo Switch at the end of the day is a mobile console, it's a handheld, and developers can't take for granted that you're gonna have an internet connection when you first pop that game cartridge in. So for people who love physical games and wanna preserve that, a modded Nintendo Switch is a great way to go about doing it because you can still buy your game cartridges, but you can rip them onto the system, keep those game cartridges nice and set aside, and play the game without the cartridges actually in the system. So beyond that and the opportunities that that brings, RetroArch and just Switch emulation in general is the other big reason why someone would want to have a modded Nintendo Switch. Emulation on the system is, in my opinion, quite good, but you need to temper your expectations. So this cannot emulate GameCube games, or it can't very well, and I'll get into why that is. But with RetroArch actually playing it on the Nintendo Switch operating system, Horizon, so that you know, you're in the Nintendo Switch menus, you just open up RetroArch as though it's its own application, its own game that you downloaded essentially, and you go through the RetroArch menus, you can play things like NES games, Super Nintendo games, GBA games, obviously. But you can also run a little bit more complex things like PlayStation 1 games, those run well. And then you get into the Nintendo 64 and the Dreamcast, and things get a little bit more spotty. The DS runs well, though you can't really get you know games to turbo to speed up, which is what I would like if I'm playing an older Pokemon game. I'd like to have some sort of acceleration there to be able to get the, the text to move faster, the battle animations to go faster. But then something I didn't get to talk about in my previous video because it wasn't really around yet and still sort of coming into the fold is Citra, which is the 3DS emulator. That is coming 
to the Nintendo Switch. It actually already has, um, but it's still in development, still being improved. And I've, I mean, I've seen Pokemon games, you know, like Pokemon um, X and Y, running on this at, you know, 30, 35 frames per second pretty consistently. It's not, you know, super smooth. It's not like you're playing it on the original hardware. Again, it's a DS game, so you get the two screens. You got to have the one screen, you know, really small in the corner, the top screen larger. I don't like splitting up the screen that way and playing DS games on a single screen. It's just not for me. But the reality is it is possible to emulate 3DS games to very mixed effects, same with the Nintendo 64 and the Dreamcast, on the Nintendo Switch just using RetroArch. But if you want to get more complicated, um, there is a LACA release for the Nintendo Switch. And LACA essentially is a different operating system. In fact, LACA is an operating system you could install on your computer. If you had an old computer and you were like, I don't want to use Windows on this anymore. It's just slow. I don't like it. You could install LACA because it's a Linux-based operating system. On the computer, you'd completely overwrite Windows and you'd end up with a LACA computer that doesn't even have a web browser and it is strictly made for game emulation and it's very focused on that. Now, of course, if you're doing this on an older computer, you still may not get great emulation results, but on the Nintendo Switch, you can get up to emulating things like Dreamcast pretty well, Nintendo 64 pretty well, better than you could on RetroArch running within you know, the Nintendo Switch you know, firmware horizon itself. Um, and you can even, to an extent, reasonably playable of select titles of GameCube games through LACA. And you can do this with Android as well. People install Android on their Nintendo Switch. You know, again, a different operating system. It's not just a game that you launch from the Switch home screen. You're completely changing the operating system of the Switch to Android. And you're doing this probably on a different SD card so that if you want to switch back to the Switch operating system, you can do so by just switching out the SD card. Getting different Android applications installed in the Nintendo Switch is much harder than if you just already had an Android tablet that you wanted to do this with. So I don't recommend it, even though it will get you, you know, a larger library of games that are accessible to play, including the GameCube, two mixed effects. I don't see that ever truly improving without individual optimized emulators. So if you're watching on eBay and you find one of these for 500 bucks, what you really want to look for is a Nintendo Switch modded with Atmosphere. It's probably the search result you want to use. Atmosphere is going to be the best Nintendo Switch operating system for you to have. You don't want like SXOS if it mentions that. That's outdated stick to atmosphere and of course there is a hassle you know for you personally even though you're getting the system already pre-modded for 500 bucks you have to do things to kind of maintain the console you need to manually update it which isn't as difficult as it was you know i would say a year ago but it's still definitely something that you know the average gamer may not be interested in doing if you're thinking about getting this for the sake of emulation and you're going to shell out 500 bucks to buy one don't do it. Instead, buy the Xbox Series S, put the thing in developer mode. It sounds complicated. Maybe you've watched videos on putting the system in developer mode, but look, it's going to end up being easier than trying to mess around with this if you're someone that's not willing to take on the challenge of owning, updating, and kind of maintaining a modded Nintendo Switch. And the Xbox Series S in developer mode with RetroArch is able to run games quite well. I mean, I'm talking even GameCube games can run on that, whereas I think they perform much better on the Series S than they would ever perform on the Nintendo Switch. The Series S is a more powerful console, and ultimately at the end of the day, it's the console that's probably going to have a further lifespan off into the future, and that's for only 300 bucks. If you were to spend 500 and get the Series X, then at least you got the disk drive in there too, you got more storage space, that's all probably worth it. Um, but definitely the Series S at 300 bucks is a much better deal than you know even buying a Nintendo Switch at 300 bucks retail to mod, which of course you can't buy one on a store shelf again to mod. That's not possible anymore. But if theoretically you could find one used for 300 bucks, I still would say go with the Series S if you're interested in game emulation. If you're someone that's interested in playing backup Nintendo Switch games, you want to be able to back up your games, keep those cartridges safe, and you're interested in preserving the physical media that you buy then yes, if you're that into Nintendo, that into the Nintendo Switch, obviously you can't get that experience anywhere else. You gotta play the Nintendo Switch games on a Nintendo Switch. Yes, I know PC emulation is out there, but if you're into the physical cartridges, the Nintendo Switch is obviously your only option, but I think you're gonna get a great experience out of it. And we know that there will be, you know, years worth of Nintendo Switch games coming out as it's, you know, Successor has not been announced yet. The OLED is not its replacement. And ultimately, we should be getting years of Nintendo Switch games yet to come. And, you know, more titles from previous generations getting ported to it. So it's a fun console. And if you're using it for that purpose, I think it's worth picking one up, even at 
500 bucks. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Bailey and I will see you in the next video.